All right, it is officially 6.06, and the technologically challenged are uh, apparently at the helm. So uh, I would like to call our meeting to order. It is 6.06, declared that we have a quorum present, and I would like to do the uh, roll call. <clears throat> Mason Howard, I am present. Uh, uh, Mr. Schwartner. Present, present. Present, Mr. Atkins. Present and accounted for. President accounted for Mr. Reinhardt. Present. Ms. Patty Says. Present. Ms. Quayar. Present. And Mr. Dunn. I am present. All right. I'm glad everyone's here. I hope everyone's healthy. Uh, <clears throat> here we go. On uh, March the 16th. I'm sorry. Um, on March 16th, 2020, Mr. Uh, Governor Greg Abbott granted a request by the Attorney General, Mr. Ken Paxton, to temporarily suspend a limited number of open meeting laws to the extent necessary to allow telephonic and video conference meetings in response to the coronavirus COVID-19. And in accordance with those suspended rules, we certify the following. Uh, number one, notice of uh, this meeting has been posted online for at least 72 hours. One hour if an emergency meeting or emergency supplemental item. Uh, number two, although members of the board are not gathered in a central physical location, we do have a quorum in attendance at this meeting by video conference or telephone call. We are meeting by the use of Google software application, which allows two-way communication for board members and staff. Number four, regarding public comment, in lieu of a public appearance at the board meeting, members of the public may submit written comments to the board regarding agenda items or topics via email prior to the beginning of the meeting addressed to uh, lfoc at brezportisd.net, which will be provided to the board. And in the email, uh, please state your name, address, topic, and comment. Number five, all other meeting procedures will adhere, adhere to board adopted procedures to the extent practicable. Pract practical. <clears throat> what is pract practical? Uh, number six, an audio recording of this meeting is being made and will be available to the public at a later date. And number seven, we apologize in advance for any unforeseeable difficulties and ask for your patience as we navigate through this unprecedented uh, condition. Our invocation and pledges of allegiance, we will now do the Invocation, which I will lead, and I will ask Mr. Scott Schwartner to lead our Pledges of Allegiance. So, if you will, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for every opportunity uh, to be a part of your wonderful creation. Be with us tonight as we are uh, taking on uh, new challenges through our roles uh, through the school board. And I just pray that you would continue to be with all of our staff and our students and our community as we all are going through an unprecedented time. God, be with those who have been uh, diagnosed and who are sick and be with all those who are caretakers or responders or, Father, all those who <clears throat> are affected uh, by all this that's going on, not just here in our district, but across the world. Father, we just ask for your guidance and your wisdom tonight as we work through uh, <clears throat> our information and Father, help us just to do our very best to um, uh, lead and guide and direct our, our school, our district, and our community as best we can. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. I'm going to say let's uh, stand for our Pledges of Allegiance and ask Mr. Schwartner if he will lead. Join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the, to flag, the flag of the United, United States, 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 States of America. America. And to, the republic, and to the republic for which it stands, for which it stands one nation, one under, nation God, under God, indivisible, liberty, liberty, and justice. Liberty. Liberty. Now with the Texas flag, Texas honor flag. the Texas flag, Texas pledge allegiance to the, the Texas. Texas, one to God, God, but one, one individual. Right. Thank you. I have to ask because I got in late. Uh, do we have anyone who has asked to address the board through email to mislead us? 
Uh, President Howard, we did not receive any request to make comments uh, on agenda items or non-agenda items. Okay, thank you. Uh, that being the case, we do not have any request to comment to the board. Uh, so we will move on to our next uh, item on our agenda. Uh, the next item on our agenda is our consent agenda. Uh, are there any items that have been re that want to be requested uh, to be pulled from the consent agenda? Do we have any items from the consent agenda that would like to be pulled? Okay, then hearing none, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? I so move. No move. Uh, moved by Ms. Patty Says and seconded by Mr. Schwartner. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All, all opposed by nay. All right, then that motion carries. Then the next item that we have are our action items. Uh, the action item, the number uh, A or letter A is our emergency closure resolution. This resolution was prepared by Brazos Port ISD Legal Counsel, Mr. David Hodgkins. The resolution includes items related to employee compensation, student attendance waivers, staff appraisal waivers, grading and class rank, purchasing, public information request, and distribution of food. It is the administration recommends the Board of Trustees approve the emergency closure, closure resolution as presented. All right, we're not gonna do the whereas. Uh, sir, I certainly can if you would like to. No, no, that's fine. I'm just, uh, I know we normally do, but that's fine. All right. Uh, we have a motion. Uh, I'm sorry. It's, <clears throat> we have a, um, it's been moved by the, <clears throat> got me flustered. We have a resolution uh, for emergency closure that has been presented uh, by the administration. Do I have a motion to approve that resolution? Yeah, I move for approval of the emergency closure resolution. All right. No, it's been, I'll second it. It's been moved by Jerry and seconded um, <clears throat> by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And all opposed by nay. All right. Then that carries. Thank you. I'm working through my information on my computer. Sorry for the delay. Not like you got any place to go anyway. <laughs> That's true. I do have dinner waiting on me though. All right. Uh, the next item on our agenda is the uh, TASB Superintendent of the Year uh, resolution. And I would like to read that. Um, <clears throat> in honor, it, it is our honor and privilege to nominate Mr. Danny Massey for the Texas Association of School Board Superintendent of the Year in recognition of his exceptional leadership and tireless efforts in supporting and promoting our students, our staff and our schools in his five years at Brasport Independent School District, uh, Superintendent uh, Danny Massey has overseen the massive turnaround of our schools leading to our district back to setting the standard for educational excellence throughout our state. The Brasport Independent School District Board of Trustees on this date, April the 20th, 2020, firmly resolved to nominate Mr. Danny Massey, the superintendent of schools for his exemplary and visionary leadership toward improving student performance in our schools. <clears throat> Do I have a motion to approve? Move for approval. Second. Second. 
Moved by uh, Mr. Schwartner and seconded by Mr. Reinhardt. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And all those opposed by nay. All right, that does, uh, that does pass. Thank, thank you. Thank you all very much. I'm, it's honored to work in this school district. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right, the next item that we have on our agenda uh, are our reports, the preliminary budget assumption and anticipated expenditures. That's under report A. Is that you, Mr. Massey? Ms. Kelly? Good evening. Can you all see my screen? I should have the presentation of the guiding principles and preliminary budget assumptions showing. I do see that on mine. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, then I'll get started. The following is in accordance with board policy CE and Texas Education Code sections 44.002 through 006. As part of the budget development process, key educational staff are involved and participate in setting budgetary priorities. As such, we conducted the guiding principles survey, and tonight it is my pleasure to present the results of that survey. I will also provide an update on the budget development process for 2021. The budget planning process includes soliciting feedback from board members, campus, and district administrators. Feedback from the survey helped to set guiding principles for the upcoming budget year. The survey was divided into two sections. Section one, which makes up 80% of our, or 86% of our annual operating budget is personnel and competitive compensation. Section two are supports that contribute to the overall success of students. This section contains areas that we have strategically focused on for the past three to four years and that we believe provide the necessary supports to help all students succeed. Items in both categories are ranked with one being the highest or top priority, so keep in mind, the lower the score, the higher the priority. The first section, personnel and competitive compensation includes competitive pay increases, stipends, incentives, overall benefits, and the need to provide additional campus staff. Again, while taking the survey, one was the respondent's top priority. So on these charts, the lower the number, the higher the priority. Providing a competitive pay increase is overwhelmingly the top priority, but with declining enrollment and the uncertainty of state funding beyond the 2021 school year, we must find a way to remain competitive while also adopting a budget that is sustainable for future years. We know that allocated resources, or we know that a teacher is the most impactful um, person in a student's life. We have allocated resources and added over 150 campus teachers and teacher supports in the past three years. We will continue to evaluate campus staffing levels based on ratios and individualized student needs while prioritizing compensation increases in an overall compensation package that positions us in a competitive market to retain and recruit quality teachers. as one slide ahead of myself. Section two are support areas that contribute to the success of all students. While each of these students, each of these supports are crucial and necessary, the survey provides feedback to prioritize available resources. Ranking as the top priority is academic intervention support, which includes personnel at campuses that provide additional support to students that have been identified through the campus PLC process as needing additional supports and resources. It also includes supplemental programs that provide differentiated and accelerated instruction. We will likely see students who need additional supports in the fall to bridge the gap from the current school closure due to COVID-19. We will explore federal funding opportunities as well as resources from our operating budget to provide necessary intervention supports. The second highest priority is special education supports. Campus supports are provided to evaluate place and provide educational and or other services to students who have an individual education plan or IEP approved. IEP plans are based on a student's disabilities, functional and learning needs, and level of access to the general curriculum. 
The current budget for 1920 increased spending by over $1 million to meet the needs of our special education population. As the number of referrals increased by over 65%, campuses are providing special education supports to 220 more students. Special education staffing levels have been reviewed by the Director of Special Education and with each campus principal. Supports will continue to be reviewed based on individual student needs. The third highest priority is campus behavior support, which includes behavior interventionists to provide teacher support on classroom management and behavior support strategies. Behavior interventionists help to collect and analyze data on selected students and complete functional behavior assessments to effectively develop and monitor a behavior intervention plan. They work collaboratively with campus administrators, counselors, and interventionists. This also includes behavior technicians or paraprofessional support. Our behavior technicians are currently shared between campuses. For the 2021 budget, we will be adding four behavior technicians, which will provide full-time support for each elementary campus. The next two areas, counseling, social supports, and campus safety and security were both identified by BISD as legislative priorities for this past 86th session. We advocated for increased counseling services and campus-based mental and behavioral health services for students. We also advocated for additional and ongoing school safety initiatives. Prior to knowing the outcome of the 86th legislative session, we reorganized our secondary counseling services and committed additional resources to provide stronger academic advisement supports, a college, career, and military readiness counselor, and LSPs to provide stronger mental health supports. We also added a safety and security coordinator to oversee emergency management protocols. While the legislative session did provide increased funding for these areas through the school safety allotment and CCMR outcomes bonus, our local action first demonstrates our commitment to provide the necessary supports in safe and secure facilities for our students. The next support is for our English language learners or ELLs. And while it is a state mandated support, BISD goes above and beyond the required basic services to provide opportunities for this student population. Four years ago, we exited 41 students from the traditional bilingual setting. And this past year, we exited 168. The number of ELLs exiting the program, program demonstrates the supports to eliminate the language barrier are effective. We have encouraged and reimbursed teachers to obtain their EL, ESL certification to ensure teachers are highly trained to better support our ELLs once they exit the traditional bilingual program. A few short years ago, BISD was considered stage four for ELL performance on state assessments and we are now at a one. Again, this demonstrates the effectiveness of the supports we have in place. The state also recognizes the challenges in closing the gap that a language barrier creates and has created the new early education allotment to support having these students ready on grade level by third grade. The next support is our technology integration support. Over five years ago, BISD launched the Empower Ed program and deployed one-to-one -one devices district-wide. This support has included digital coaches to help teachers learn to use and integrate the use of technology into student learning. This also includes the tech support side needed to manage deployment and maintenance of all devices. As things continue to evolve, technology has become an embedded part of everyday teaching and learning, so we must also evolve the supports that we have in place. As such, we will be reorganizing this initiative to provide campus instructional coaches. The instructional coach model will elevate our teachers by providing blended learning strategies that allow the teachers to focus on teaching students while technology engages kids with learning, uh, with quality learning. The last support is advanced academics and GT programming. GT refers to students who perform, perform at or show potential for performing at a remarkably high level when compared to others of the same age, experience, or environment, and who exhibit high performance capability in an intellectual, creative, and artistic area. While there are many supports in place that focus on closing the gaps, these supports are equally as valuable and focus on providing enrichment and differentiation for those high-performing students. 
Services emphasize skills in self-directed learning, thinking, research, and communication. So while we summarize student supports into eight categories for this survey, it's important to know there are many other ways in which we strategically reach and connect with students. Fine arts, athletics, elementary robotics, art clubs, and career and technology are among the many other ways we support students and set the standard for educational excellence. The survey also provides an opportunity for direct feedback and comments related to the development of the 2021 budget year. A copy of the feedback is included in this link and also in board book. We currently have $58 million in fund balance, which puts us in a strong financial position. Prior to closing for COVID-19, I was projecting that we would end the year the 1920 school year with about a $4 million deficit. This is primarily due to the loss of enrollment and the change in 313 supplemental uh, revenue loss projections being lower than anticipated. TEA has communicated that our attempts to provide remote learning opportunities that we will receive full funding for our average daily attendance prior to the closure. There are some cost savings associated with being closed, such as fuel costs for buses that are not running daily, energy and utility consum consumption, substitute costs associated with teacher absences are just a few. We are still in the process of evaluating these items, but I want you to know that it is likely to put us in a better than anticipated deficit position. The next few slides include the overall budget calendar for your reference. The 2021 budget development process continues to be ongoing. Campus needs assessment meetings, although virtual, are still underway. TASB has completed the compensation review and Ms. Kirshner presented that report at the March board meeting. The compensation package will be presented with a recommendation for approval at the June board meeting. Campus allocations based on projected enrollment have been distributed. These allocations are based on enrollment, so there is a slight adjustment to reflect enrollment changes at each campus. Meetings with the elementary principals have been conducted to review enrollment and grade level staffing. We have also met with secondary principals to review staffing needs for next year. A district-wide staffing analysis for special education um, has been conducted and we will continue to staff based on individual student needs. We're in the process, um, to, we're, we're in the process of summarizing these changes for the budget assumption sheet. Um, for now, we, have, we will have at least $250,000 of a net reduction from staffing adjustments. Um, departments have also been tasked with cutting their budgets by 10%. While some things are legally required, the department heads are evaluating the areas that can be reduced without a significant loss in services or supports. We anticipate the net department reductions to be close to half a million dollars. For your reference, the complete budget calendar is included. I just would like to point out that the budget workshop is scheduled for August 3rd. It is usually held the last week in July, but based on the timeline of when I expect to receive certified values, we have scheduled the workshop for August 3rd. We will adopt the budget and the tax rate at the regular board meeting August 17th. Revenue projections for the 2021 budget uh, reflect a 28% decrease in m and values as we have three value limitations that will enter year one of the limitation phase. Property tax collections will actually be less than tier one entitlement, meaning we will not be subject to recapture for the 2021 school year. I do show a $15 million estimate in the 313 supplemental payment amount these amounts are estimated from the current year calculation on LNG train one that was in the value limitation period this year. Train one netted about $5.7 million and the Dow 215 project is over twice that value. LNG train two is equivalent to train one. So the $15 million estimate is certainly conservative. House Bill 3 provided an increase in public education spending, but also provided property tax relief. While we compressed our tax rate this past year, we will likely be required to compress further. This effort was made by legislators as an attempt to restore the state's cost of funding 
of education, which was down below 38%. The tax rate used in these calculations is 96.64 cents per $100 evaluation. Beyond the 2021 year, projections are based on current law, but are largely dependent upon what happens during the 87th legislative session. Provisions of the 313 tax code are up for renewal, as well as the uncertainty of the state's ability to sustain increased funding levels that were approved in House Bill 3. While there was already a concern, the downturn in the economy due to COVID-19, due, due to the COVID-19 clother further exacerbates the concern. We do have a strong fund balancer in a position to absorb a deficit budget, but we need to continue making decisions that are sustainable for the foresight that significant, with the foresight that significant changes are on the horizon during the 87th legislative session. Lastly, a link is included to the budget assumption handout. To date, we have identified $776,000 worth of reductions. I have a placeholder for the TASB 3% compensation increase model. And then we I've also included the estimated cost for the dual credit uh, to pay for dual credit for high school students with the partnership with Brazosport College. If you scroll down to the bottom, the bottom summarizes the revenue changes um, with a projected deficit of $4.6 million. We do have $3.4 million that we budget. So if those dollars are unspent, then we would actually have a $1.2 million deficit. So at this time, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Mason, we can't hear you, you're muted. Well, since Mason's having some trouble, does anybody have any questions on the uh, issue? Jerry, you got any? No, I just appreciate the effort to start and uh, looking at uh, the only thing I didn't see is the cost for the extra four uh, behavior in the library thing, but I'm sure I'm sure that'll be coming. So, in, yes, sir. They're also included in the net reduction, so we were able to follow the addition of the behavior paras, the library paras, um, and with the vacant budgeted positions. So we still, those added, we still have a net reduction of $250,000. So they're in with the net reduction of 250. Mm -hmm. But I will have them next meeting broken out. So you'll Good. be at the campus level. Yeah, we can yeah, show the add and show the, show the uh, subtraction. That'd be good. Thanks. Yes, I will. We're working on that. Gotcha. I'll just go down the screen here. Well, maybe, maybe she's coming back on. Chris, do you have any questions? No, I just uh, appreciate all the work. It's uh, it's a great starting starting point. Appreciate it. Joe Reinhardt, do you have any questions? I'm good. Uh, Patty says. I'm good. Is Liz still on? Yeah, I just got back on. I uh, got all. Okay, I saw it. Any questions, Liz? No. Mason, are you up? There yeah, I'm back. I'm back. You're doing such a fine job, so I'll let let you finish. Um, just just right. want to throw in. Uh, I, I see that you know the three percent uh, increase. Uh, we we may need to look very closely at that versus one time payment versus three percent. So uh, different times at this point. So. Yes, That's sir. It's a employee. placeholder at this point in budget assumptions, but this yeah, person will have the complete compensation package at the June board meeting. And right, it's better to over guess than 
Right. Maybe the LD thing. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other thoughts before we move on? Thank you, Ms. Rebecca. Um, next under, under our reports is board committee reports. Anybody doing anything in this fine COVID-19 uh, time as far as the, their committees are concerned? No, but I've been to Kroger for a uh, pickup two or three times. <laughs> That's the extent of my uh, input. <laughs> All right. Uh, all right, if there are no others, then uh, we'll move on. Our next work session uh, discussion, uh, our next board meeting is May the 19th, our regular schedule. Um, and then uh, I don't believe we're going to have executive session unless uh, Mr. Massey tells me that something's come up. Craig, no, sir, uh, we will not have executive session tonight. Okay. Uh, uh, I'd just like to say that it's nice that the superintendent did dress up for this. I just wonder if he has shorts and tennis shoes on. <laughs> just thought I'd throw that in. And Mason, we're going to hold you to this 35 minute meetings from now on. Uh, they're going to have to go all online. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm not the cause of the longer meetings. Uh, <laughs> not pointing fingers. Congra not pointing fingers. Congratulations. Well, you are honored at uh, Freeport Elementary as their outstanding volunteer. Ms. Quayar was honored. Thank you, Joe. I just want to say thank you to all the people that have been doing the lunches. They've just been doing a fabulous job from what I've heard. I've talked about a few of the schools and see them passing it out, and it's a great thing they're doing. So thank you, Danny, for that. Uh, yeah, so, you know, uh, Rachel Arthur and uh, Miss Kelly, um, you, you know, as, as I've said uh, before and many times uh, in the future, I'll continue to say it because it's true, uh, along with our healthcare professionals, our child nutrition workers are going to be considered the heroes of this crisis. Uh, Absolutely. All right. Well, there. If there is nothing else, then uh, and we do not have any uh, objections, then we will stand adjourned. It is six thirty-eight by my watch. Stay safe, everyone. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. You'll take care. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Danny. Thank you. Bye, bye. Bye. Thank you.